How's it going, YouTube? Dong here. So, in this video, we're going to talk about whether you should learn web development or backend development in 2023. So, what we're going to talk about in this video is the differences between the two, which one you should learn. We're going to talk about job prospects. We're going to talk about demand. And lastly, the fun part, we're going to talk about salary. So, let's get right into it. So, let's talk a little bit about uh, what they are. Because I do think that if you're watching this video, it's good to uh, give a context into what we're going to cover. Because uh, something like web development and backend development is a very broad term, right? So it kind of helps that we're going to define what we're going to talk about in this video. So web development, what I'm going to talk about in this video is I'm going to talk about things like uh, front end, back end, full stat, uh, or not back end, but we're going to talk mainly about front end and full stack web development. Whereas on the back end side of things, it's going to be a catch all term. So when it comes to back end, I'm going to talk about things like server management. We're going to talk about scripting. We're going to talk about optimizations, you know, low level programming and stuff like that. So without further, so that's basically the context that we're going to go around. So let's talk about what web development and back end development actually is. So web development is going to be, you know, you building websites on uh, browsers such as Chrome, Safari, Opera, X Edge, etc, etc, etc. So these are typically going to be the web apps that you see every day. You know, you're surfing Google. That's going to be a web app. That's something that you would typically be responsible for building, right? So, and then backend. Honestly, I could talk about backend in a separate video, right? But in backend, we're going to be primarily focusing on, you know, things like server management, right? So, you know, you have a certain database, right? It could be MySQL, NoSQL, SQL Server, etc., etc., etc. You know, you're going to do uh, typical, any sort of server management. So, for example, at my last internship, I actually did a, a lot of server management and it was primarily a back-end position. And what I was responsible for doing at that particular internship is I was responsible for, uh, we typically used a lot of XLS, XLSX files. And what we would do is we have all these uh, employment insurance records, and then we wanted to move it to Microsoft SQL Server. So I was responsible for moving the uh, Excel files into Microsoft SQL Server, as this allowed us to become more scalable, uh, you know, produce more EI records and stuff like that. That was basically one of the internships that I actually did. And when it comes to scripting, for example, you know, you have things like Linux, Bash, and that kind of thing. That's considered backend development. I'm seeing that a lot at my manufacturing job. There's a couple guys there that are responsible for scripting and making sure the imaging process uh, goes in is successful, right? So the next topic I want to talk about is who's each of them for, right? So you want to learn web development if you are a very visual person. I know that I'm a very visual person. I like to see what I'm building. So that's why web development was a lot more attractive to me than backend development. You know, I never really got into backend development. It just happened by chance that all the positions that I happened to get were in backend development, right? So if you're a visual, very visual person, I do recommend that you head on into the web development space, right? And another thing that you might want to consider is oh, there's going to be a lot of resources. That's the thing that's really underrated especially in the development world, is the amount of resources that are located. When you learn something like, uh, for example, COBOL, that's a ridiculous example, but let's go over there. There's not a lot of people who are really, really good at COBOL, right? Whereas, you know, when you're learning uh, the front-end frameworks, there's a lot of people who are really, really good at them. So when you get stuck, there's probably a solution out there for you. So it makes your job a lot easier, right? as opposed to say backend development where there's not a lot of backend there's not as many backend developers as there are front end developers or full stack developers so you're not able to get the amount of resource that you would if you were to become a uh, backend developer so that's one of the advantages to web development now what are the cons to web development well the first one is everybody's doing it right 
So because everybody's doing it, it's very, very difficult to stand out. You have to have amazing projects, or you have to have connections, or your networking needs to be all point. It's truly a red ocean out there, right? Uh, another uh, con is, since there's so much information out there, you know, a lot of people get into this thing where they're, they get shiny object syndrome. And I did do a video about that, so make sure that you go watch that video as well on shiny object syndrome. You know, there's so many technologies. There's JavaScript, there's TypeScript, there's Redux, React, React Native. The list goes on and on and on. You could go all day about that, right? So let's talk about the back end side of things now. Some of the pros. The pros is not a lot of competition, right? Not as much competition as web development, right? Because there's not a lot of people actually doing it. Another one is, you know, not a it doesn't appeal to a lot of people, so you're gonna, gonna generally have less competition, right? What are some of the cons to it? Well, it's not very visual. You know, you can't see what you're building. You don't know kind of what it is until you see the final product, you know? Another thing that I found is it's very algorithm heavy. So if you don't come from a computer science background, it can be very, very difficult to kind of understand everything. And you know, a lot of algorithms are typically used in backend development. So your lead code skills do need to be much, much more on point than it would be if you're a web developer, right? Because a web developer is not concerned about uh, reversing the linked list. You know, you don't need to learn how to reverse a linked list to change your website from FAFAFA to FFFFF, right? Very simple. Another thing is uh, when you go, when it comes to web develop or backend development, rather, you know, you do need to learn lower level languages, which can be a little bit more tricky. So, for example, if you're learning embedded, for example, then you you have to deal with like C, and C has a lot of pointers and stuff like that. C++ is a nightmare language. And another thing, the last con that I have here today, is you're competing with a lot of the computer science skills, the, the computer science kids, rather. In school, a lot of computer science people will be learning languages like Java, will be learning, learning languages like C++. So, you're, if you're self-taught, for example, you're kind of at a disadvantage because these guys have had four years of learning this skill and they got a four-year head start over you, which is why a lot of people end up choosing web development, right? So let's now talk about demand. So when it comes to demand, what you need to know is both are in demand, right? You don't have to worry about demand. What I found though is a lot, there's a lot more full stack and a lot more front end positions than there are back end, right? So that's something to keep in mind. But at the same time, a lot of them are, uh, when it comes to the front end, a lot of them are senior positions. So that's something to keep in mind. That's just based on what I'm seeing in the marketplace. So the next thing that we're gonna talk about is we're going to talk about the types of companies that you would typically want to work for depending on if you choose front and full stack or back end development. So when it comes to this question, what you would typically see is, you know, if you're working as a back end developer, you would typically be working on big companies. Now the reason for this is because a lot of big companies are more concerned with scale and that's when they require back end developers. So for example, ChatGPT, you know, they're at server overloads a lot of the time nowadays because everyone's trying to use them. So a back-end developer is going to be very, very useful to them, right? As opposed to, say, a web developer who's a small Series A or Series B startup is not going to be concerned with, you know, performance increases. They're just trying to get an MVP off the ground. But that's another thing about web development is it opens up your... Uh, the companies that you're going to work for to basically all of them. So that's kind of a give and take there. So the last thing we're going to talk about in this video today is we're going to talk about salary. So salary, uh, back end does tend to pay more simply because you're more likely to work at big companies and big companies are going to be able to pay you more, right? So that's it for the video today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit like, leave me a comment, tell me what you thought of it in the comment section below, and subscribe as it really helps support the channel here. And without further ado, I'll see you 
in the next video.